founder of the Midnight BSD project. Today, I'm going to answer some questions about Midnight BSD. When will Midnight BSD be done? When it's perfect, so never. All operating systems are constantly evolving. There'll never be an end point when this project is complete. It will just get better and better. Have you stopped development on Midnight BSD? No. A lot of our developers are currently on vacation. When will it be like PCBSD? Probably never. PCBSD uses KDE. We decided to work with other graphical environments. Uh, we're still interested in GNU Step, but we're also looking at GNOME and any other suggestions people might have as a replacement uh, graphical environment. Um, we just don't feel that KDE is the right choice for us. There's already PCBSD and Desktop BSD and a lot of Linux distros using uh, KDE, so we'd like to do something different. It's, it's not a bad OS, but it's, it's, you know, it's just a FreeBSD distro. Uh, when will the installer be done? Well, it's taking a lot longer than I anticipated. Um, we plan to include the new installer in 0.3 release. Uh, Live CD is available in our wiki right now if you'd like to give me an IPSD a spin before the new installer is done. I know a lot of people have trouble with sysinstall. That's completely understandable. Um, should, should I use it? Well, a lot of people come into the chat room and they tell me that they're a novice or that they're a beginning computer user. Midnight BSD isn't ready for those type of users yet. Um, hobbyists, you know, anyone that's willing to play around, it has a little experience with Unix like operating systems uh, or is interested in learning, um, we'd be glad to help you get Midnight BSD going, but it's not end user ready yet. Where are you at with the project? Um, we're preparing to do a final release with the sysinstall uh, based installer right now. That's going to be 0.2 release. Um, the release also has updated software packages, um, newer imports. Uh, a lot of the software that comes with it, like Bind and um, SendMail, Secure Shell, uh, a lot of those type of things have been updated in the base system. We've got newer uh, compiler version, a lot of things like that. So it's just a kind of a get us caught up release. The next version, uh, 0.3 release, will include the new installer and an import package management tools. What is Magus? A lot of times you might see us, um, or Magus, some people like to call it. Uh, a lot of times you'll, you'll hear us talking about that or see that in the chat room. That's our build cluster software. That's what we use to, to actually compile imports and make packages that we can distribute to users. We use that mostly for testing uh, ports to make sure they're still working, they're fetchable, uh, things like that. The, the cluster right now, the i386 cluster, is hosted at Eastern Michigan University in the Computer Science Department. Um, they have a, like a server room, so to speak, and we have, oh, about 15 machines in there right now that are part of the cluster. And that communicates with a server that, that I have in this room, um, Stargazer, that, that you might hear us talk about, that actually has our database on it that, that uh, Magus uses. And Chris Reinhardt wrote that. Um, the new import tools, will, as like I said, will be released uh, with 0 0.3 release. Um, the next release will be pretty soon. I don't have an exact date. I was hoping for mid-July, but we've had some problems with a couple imports, and those are, are critical. So we're gonna we're gonna postpone until we've got that just right. Um, there's also a few other ports we'd like to try to get thrown in there that that we think will make be nice for users. Uh, what is the roadmap? I get this question a lot. Um, we do have kind of an informal roadmap, and I've posted that in the blog, the developer blog, uh, which is at justjournal.com slash users slash mbsd. Uh, you can go back to the old entries and read that. There's also some entries in my personal blog about Midnight BSD. Um, however, just to give you a kind of an idea, 0 0.2 is, is our, you know, like I said, is our next release. That's just going to be packages. Um, that's the second release that includes imports. Um, 0.1.1 was our first release um, with imports included. Um, the 0 0.3 release will have the new installer and import tools. Um, the import tools are like you know new package management, um, so package add and those type of tools will be replaced. Uh, we're hoping to also have a graphical version of that included and a way to update packages. So you know when you download the release and say six months from now a new version of GNOME comes out or OpenOffice or something of that nature, you can just hit a button and it will update all your software, much like Linux distros or Mac OS or Windows does. Um, 0.4 release um, will release 
if needed. Um, that's just going to be a what's wrong with 0 0.3, you know, how can we improve this? Um, if 0 0.3 goes very well, we're going to move right into a 1.0 release. Post 1.0 release, we're going to start working on major architect or change, architecture changes with the kernel and the user land. That's when we're actually going to start making real changes. Right now, Midnight BSD is a lot like FreeBSD 6.1. We've got some improvements and some enhancements, but at the end of the day, it's, it's very similar to FreeBSD 6.1. And we'd like to do something original with the system. And frankly, I'm really into operating systems, and I'd like to, I'd like to play with the kernel a lot more than we've done so far. Um, Zero dot two release does include some new hardware support. We'd like to expand that further, get support for Intel ICH nine, some of the newer AMD chipsets, uh, Ethernet, a lot more support for wireless. That's a big problem in Midnight BSD right now, and we'd like to improve that. Um, that's kind of a rough idea. I'm not sure what Chris's plans are with with Magus and imports down the road. Um, I know he's got a lot of plans. He's keeping secret right now. Um, what do I think about the path to the free BSD project? Uh, based on some recent, you know, the BSD talk that some of the core team did a month or two back, it sounds like they're focused on embedded devices and on server systems, which is great. That's, you know, FreeBSD has always been an excellent server platform. I use it at work for one of our servers there. Um, it's a great system. Um, I don't think that, you know, we're going to really have competition from them in the desktop space uh, as we move forward with the project. I think we'll end up um, kind of going our own path, and uh, you know it's really good. Um, lately, a couple people have been asking me about Dragonfly. Also, um, their 2.0 release came out recently, and I'm, I, congratulations on that. It sounds like they've got a really neat clustering solution coming up, and uh, their new Hammer file system looks interesting. Um, I don't for CS including it in Midnight BSD, it doesn't seem to fit the desktop space, um, but it's definitely an interesting system and uh, Matt Dillon should get a lot of um, kudos for that. Uh, is it true that you have a woman working in the project? I have actually had a couple people come into the chat room and complain because Night Lily is in the project. Um, yes, she's a woman, um, actually she's my wife and uh, she helps fund the project and she works on it. She's a computer programmer. She has a bachelor's and master's degree in computer science. Um, we don't discriminate in this project, so anyone's welcome to work on the project. Any age, any ethnicity, gender, religion, we don't care. You can be from anywhere in the world. Um, we love the help. What license is Midnight BSD under? We're under the BSD 2 clause license. Um, some people call that the free BSD license. NetBSD recently switched that license, so there's three of us now on that, and uh, it's very, very nice license and uh, not very restrictive like the GPL. Uh, what do you think of the GPL3? It's a bit restrictive. Um, we're not against distributing software under the GPL3 um, with the project, you know, packages, compilers, software tools. Um, we prefer BSD license software, but it's really hard to do a desktop system and be picky about licenses. There's so many different licenses and so much software that uh, open source people write and it's just impossible to, to, to pick and choose especially on a, a license like the GPL3 that's so popular. Um, who updates the developer blog? Quite often I'm the, the author of, of blog entries on the, on the developer blog. Um, Chris occasionally, Chris Reinhardt, um, also develops a lot, writes on the blog about Magus and import tools and uh, my wife Karen also writes in the blog quite often. Uh, she knows what's going on with the project and she helps out uh, from time to time on that. Um, what do you use Midnight BSD for? Well, I personally have Midnight BSD installed on several computers. Um, my laptop primarily boots Midnight BSD and I use that all the time. Um, at school, at work, um, wherever, it's quite good. It, it does a lot better than Windows does on that laptop with battery life. Um, it's very helpful to me. Um, I also use it on my desktop system. I dual boot Windows and uh, Midnight BSD on that. I actually have two Midnight BSD installs, an AMD64 version and an i386 version of Midnight BSD that I do a lot of development on. Um, we have two server machines in this room that run Midnight BSD. One's running on AMD64 and one's on i386. They're both Intel machines. Um, 
we have a couple uh, virtual PC and um, Parallels installs in various computers in the room. And I also have two Sun Machines that are running Midnight BSD in the room. So I use it for all sorts of things. Um, the Sun Machines work in, in Magus occasionally to build software packages for that. And uh, Chris also has a machine and we usually have all three of those work in the cluster. Uh, they're all about 500 megahertz, so not very fast. Um, that's pretty much what I use Midnight BSD for. Um, when will you get a website that doesn't suck? Uh, the current website I designed myself, and it does kind of suck. Um, the layout isn't the best. Um, one of the guys that hangs out in the chat room a lot, Smiltron, um, has been working on a new website for, I don't know, since at least February. Uh, he had a hard drive failure and had to have that recovered, and all sorts of things are going on. And I've seen the website, and to me it's about done, but he's a perfectionist, so we'll just have to wait. Um, I'm hoping sometime after the 0.2 release we'll get that out. Um, where can I go to ask questions? Uh, the chat room on Freenode on um, NetBSD is, is a good choice. Um, usually there's at least a couple people in the room that can answer questions. We try to be in there every day. Um, you can also join one of our mailing lists, which you can find on um, midnightbsd.org. Or you can use our forums, which um, be forums.midnightbsd.org. And you can post on there, and I don't check that as often, but um, I can answer questions on that. You can also email me, luke at midnightbsd.org, and I'll try to answer any questions that you might have that, that you prefer to be private. Um, this concludes our uh, little Q&A here. Um, Thanks for uh, your interest in MidnightBSD. Have a good day.